you can have a life after pain or after loss just by showing them my life because you know it's been seven years but I'm still here. Hey sis, welcome to Girlhood. I'm Brittany Whitaker and today I'll be interviewing Cynthia about how she was able to find hope from a space of total hopelessness. Okay, so where were you born and raised? I was born in Torrance, um, but I was I lived everywhere. We moved around a lot, so just different cities everywhere all the time. <laughs> oh. What was your childhood like? It was nice, you know, just having a, a younger sister. Uh, we got along, but, you know, siblings fight, yeah. so that was something. So it was the three of us for a while, and then um, my mom met someone, mm -hmm. and then I got my brother. So okay. he's about 14 years younger. Oh, wow. My mom, she was a single parent, so okay. she just would get any job she could or anywhere she could afford to, mm -hmm. you know, pay rent. So, we, yeah, that's the reason why we would move. Um, she, we had struggles, you know, financially mm -hmm. um, when I was younger. So that was you know, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I get that. What was it like once you moved um, in with your brother's dad? At first it was good. Okay. He was nice. Um, you know, we lived about 14, 13 years without like someone. It was just my mom. Mm -hmm. And then when he came in, it was like, oh, he was very nice. And once my brother came, we were all excited because he was a baby. Mm -hmm. and I was 14. My sister was 12. So it's like, oh, we, we're older and he, here comes a baby. But then stuff started to change after that. Mm. So it became a little bit hard having a stepdad. Okay. Yeah. What kind of things started to change? Just um, we were getting older. So yeah. um, he was just, he didn't like a lot of the stuff we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. so that transition into like preteen. Yeah. yeah it's you know, interesting. The, the high school years where yes. you want to go out with your friends right. and you want to do things. And uh, my mom would always make me ask him. Go ask him for permission. He said no for everything. Uh, so there became a point where I just had to kind of rebel, like, okay, well, he's not my dad. I'm, I'm asking you. It just became hard for them and then us because I was the problem child mm -hmm. in a sense just because mm -hmm. I didn't agree with a lot of things that he didn't like or that she would have us do. Right. Yeah. So w while you guys had things that were kind of rocky at home, what were things like at school for you? They were hard. Um, I think because coming from moving so much yeah. where I had to, I guess, I became like a people pleaser. So there became a point where I think kind of my self-esteem just wasn't really there anymore. Mm. Um, and then pe people, girls can be mean. So yes. I was bullied. Um, okay. And I just let them because I wanted friends. Mm. And I thought, well, they're my friends. So I'm just going to let them be mean to me as long as I can have someone there. Yeah. What do you think that did to you, like, mentally and emotionally at that time? Uh, it was draining. I think it was, it messed with me. Mm -hmm. um, I think whatever self-esteem I, I had, it just made it even worse, just because of the way that the girls were. Yeah. Um, so I had those, that going on. Home was hard, then school was hard, and then other stuff that was happening, um, I was molested when I was in high school mm -hmm. so just adding all that stuff it was very um, heavy and very I didn't feel like I had like someone or an outlet to run to because I couldn't run to my mom or I couldn't run to friends so your mom wasn't a safe space to share like these things happened to me I'm being bullied no because she didn't believe some of the stuff so it was just like okay well you know if your own mom doesn't believe you it's like well you just I didn't know what to do yeah. So it was, it was very, I was in a very dark place. Mm -hmm. So I tried doing things I probably shouldn't have. Like I tried committing suicide once. Mm -hmm. um, but when I was cutting myself, because I, I tried cutting, it was like something was like, why are you doing that? Like, like a little voice, like, why are you cutting? Like, stop. Like, this is not the way. Mm -hmm. So I stopped and I never tried doing that again, even though it was hard. Wow. What do you, what do you think? like brought you to that point of I don't want to be here I want to end this I didn't I was just broken mm -hmm. I was empty broken um hurt pain all of all of that just, brought just me to all the, point. the things I was tired yeah okay I didn't want to feel anymore how old were you at that point I was probably 16 17 okay yeah. So what was life like for you after high school? So I tried going to um, school, so I went to a community college. I had a job. Um, but after high school, um, things got a little bit more hard with, mm -hmm. like, my, my mom and her partner, well, my stepdad at the time. 
Uh, so they had a lot of problems and they ended up splitting. Mm. But after she, they ended up splitting, she started um, you know, using drugs and doing alcohol. So did you feel like you kind of had to take leadership and take care of your sister and your brother at that point? I tried, um, but I think I was in a point in my own life that I was so tired of like living the way we were living. Yeah. That when I had just turned 20, um, I decided I needed to leave. Okay. So I, I moved out. Yeah, that alone leaving was hard because I know I left them, mm. but I didn't really leave them, if that makes sense. Okay. So you would go back and like check on them? And yeah, if they needed anything, she, my sister would tell me if my mom was acting up, I would always run and make sure that I handled her and she handled my brother or took care of my brother so he didn't have to see everything. Okay. Uh. At the time, um, I felt like, well, I need to survive. So I had, I got a second job. So I was working two jobs. Um, I stopped going to school. Mm. Uh, so that was one part. But then the emotional and the, um, the emotional part was even harder because I felt even more like broken and alone just because, I mean, I didn't have a lot of the friendships anymore. Um, I was, I didn't have a boyfriend or anything. It was just me and trying to just make a, my life better, mm -hmm. but it just felt a little worse. Um, just because I think at the time when I had moved out and I was doing my own thing, I guess, mm -hmm. um, I was very broken. So I was doing things I was, I, now I wouldn't suggest anyone does. I was drinking, I was, you know, going clubbing. I was trying to fill the void I had with like material things or men. Okay. Yeah. So it wasn't like a healthy thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, I mean, that's common. I hear that a lot with even myself, just at times in that space where you're looking for something or you feel empty and yeah. the only things you really know of to fill those spaces or to try to numb yourself is right. to either be in a relationship mm -hmm. or party, just party every night or yeah. be drunk because it's kind of, it feels like an escape, but it's never, you still feel empty. There's never a morning you wake up where you actually feel fulfilled from that. And I did want to mention this because um, it was a point where I was at a club drunk where I saw my mom in the mirror. So I saw myself as my mom and I never wanted to be that way. So mm. that's what made me realize, okay, I, I can't do this anymore. I need to change. And I think for me, it was the same. It just felt worse. Yeah. I think I would have fun because you're not really yourself. So, you know, you're drinking or you're drunk and then you wake up. It's like, oh man, I feel worse than I felt the night before. Yeah. And I feel like there's even more things on your mind. Like mm -hmm. not only the things that were already there, but like you're feeling guilty for what you yeah. did the night before. So you feel like, okay, I need more. I need yes. more. And it just becomes an extra issue that right. wasn't even there before. Yeah. Yeah, I can definitely relate. How, at this point in your life, how did you feel about yourself and who you were um, emotionally, mentally, physically, all the things? How did you see yourself? I saw myself as a person that couldn't be loved. Mm. It was very broken, mm. very, I had a void that I just, I, I didn't really know myself, I guess. So I didn't think much of myself mm. at that time. It was a lot of stuff like I had done. So it was a lot of shame. But then also a lot of like my growing up was like, okay, well, if you know, your own parent does certain things or doesn't do certain things, it just made me like feel I couldn't be loved by anyone. So once you got to that point of feeling like I want to change, what happened from there? So a friend from work invited me to church. Mm -hmm. And then I had another friend that she wanted to try a church. So that's what made me go to church. Okay. My friends inviting me and then one wanting to try it. So what was your first experience? Was that your first experience at church? At a Christian church, yes. Okay, so you grew up Catholic? Catholic, yeah. Okay, so what was it like just your first time at this Christian church for you? I loved it. I, really? The first time, um, I remember it was Pastor Steve, the one I was speaking. And just the way he was speaking, it was like, oh man, like it, was, it wasn't none of the, it wasn't the same as when I was growing up, going to a Catholic church and mm -hmm. you had to recite all these like, Things. It was just completely different, and I was kind of blown away because it's like, oh man, like this is church. Like he was just talking, and he wasn't wearing anything. Like it was just him talking and sharing, and I, I enjoyed it. Wow. Did you feel like it was something you needed at the time? Yes, I needed. Um, I needed that. I guess hope. Mm -hmm. um, so you started going to church. You really enjoyed the church. So this was Calvary Chapel South Bay, right? Yes. 
Okay, so did you immediately like change your life and start like living for God at that point or what 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 happened? No, um the first time I went, you know, I enjoyed it. I still went a few more times. Okay. Um but every time I went, I could feel something changing. Mm. But it wasn't like immediate like, oh, okay, I'm at church now and my life is like completely made over. No. It took a few times going. Um, but one of the times um, where, and when I was there, the pastor asked if someone wanted to receive, you know, God as your Lord and Savior and commit your life to Him. I I took that call. I went up to altar call, mm -hmm. um, and I, in my heart, I I knew I was ready just to t change. Wow. So, what do you think in that moment made you realize like this is it? This is what I want. Not those other things that I've been trying. The best way I can describe it, it was just a warm feeling I had mm. of like, okay, this is this is it. Like, it was joy. It okay. wasn't happiness. It was like true joy at the moment. Like, okay, I'm, I'm I'm ready. Like, I didn't want any of the past anymore. I didn't like care what the future held. I just at that moment, I was like, okay, I'm ready to to change. I'm ready to know you. I wanted to get to know God. Wow. So did you start to get to know God? Yeah, little by little. It didn't, it, take, it took time still because mm -hmm. there was still, I think, part of like me that had these desires to still do certain things. Yeah. Um, have certain friendships. Mm -hmm. But it was like part of me, the other part of me was like, no, like I just want to get to know God and who he is and mm -hmm. start reading the Bible and just really try to understand it. Mm hmm so as you gently started to get to know God, did you start to realize that he was with you all along? Yes. Um, when I started to get to know his character and mm -hmm. just reading, you know, the Bible and the verses and stuff inside, I realized that he was there with me the whole time. Mm -hmm. All the stuff I went through in high school and um, even when I was trying to, you know, suicidal, he was there. It was him, the one that was talking to me mm -hmm. that I didn't know it was him. It was yeah. just like I was having conversations. I thought to myself, but it was like, no, you I was talking to him. He was the voice that was telling you, what are you doing? Yeah. Don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt myself, yeah. And it's so beautiful to get to know him and really experience that love and recollect, like remember the times when he was loving you and you had no idea. Yeah. That's so sweet. So what happened from there? So after that, um, I I was really at a point where I didn't want to like I didn't want any relationships. I didn't. I just wanted to know God. Mm -hmm. So I did start to change the way I was. Um, I think the way I carried myself, something inside of me just changed. And you know, I would go to work. I would um, go to church. And in that, um, not wanting to, I met an amazing guy. Wow. Yeah. Wow, so tell me about this amazing guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> we were friends at first. Um, Did you guys, where'd you guys meet? Uh, church and work, because we worked at the same place, but we attended the same church. Oh, just so happened. It just happened that we were at the same place at church, at the same place at work. Oh, wow. Um, so both, a little bit of both. Um, so we were friends and he was, you know, he was Christian. He was going to church. He grew up reading the Bible and knowing the Bible. So it was nice to have like a friendship where he wasn't looking for anything. It was just, we were just friends. That's we could nice. talk and he could encourage me or, you know, mm -hmm. and then little by little things like feelings started to happen and we started to date. Wow. Yeah. So during this time, you're starting to get to know God. Your life is changing. You met a really awesome guy. Yeah. What <laughs> was going on with your family? Well, and how my, are they responding? Well, my family was upset that I became Christian because we were Catholic, so they thought I should have stayed Catholic. Uh -huh. They didn't really understand, mm -hmm. um, so they weren't happy. So I got a lot of like negative feedback, a lot of made fun of because I was going to church. I was now a Christian, and they made fun of it because I was different. Mm -hmm. So they couldn't understand why I was different. Yeah. Um, so that was with my family, and then with like my mom, she still struggled with like the same things. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it was still hard with them and then I didn't have like the best relationship with my sister so it was just with the family it was hard okay yeah so you're experiencing these great things your life is progressing but you still having these struggles with your family yeah so um did 
how did your the new guy that was in your life and you guys started dating yeah um how did he respond to your family well i would tell him about it and he was encouraging he would always say just pray you know pray to god pray for your family for your mom wow um so i would do that it was mm-hmm. nice to to have someone that could listen mm-hmm. and not judge and just um push you and towards god and just have them encourage you to pray for them but not only you but him him himself pray for them so he was also praying for their life wow and for the relationship and the, all of it so how different was he from the men that you'd experienced before in your life completely different wow. it was i didn't feel like i deserved to have someone like him mm. just because i you know the past you feel ashamed or you don't feel worthy of it so at that time i i kind of struggled with like accepting that there's this awesome person that wanted me mm. and the way I was with my past and everything and it was hard because it was, I didn't feel worthy of it wow but yeah he was still there he's just loving you <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so what happened with that so we dated for a year mm-hmm. and then we got engaged okay. he proposed um which is crazy because after he proposed a month later you know I was still having the struggles with my mom yeah um my brother I became his legal guardian just a month after he proposed so i remember telling him like oh you know we don't have to get married you could we could wait like i'm not going to give up my brother yeah that was your first priority at the time yeah. yeah um but he was very understanding he's like you know i'm going to help you and he became that he became the help that i needed and my brother needed so he wow. became like his father figure yeah. like he was a the man that would show him how to be a man the right type of man wow what he always needed yeah And that was an opportunity for him to completely back out, but he took Yeah, he didn't run. He just stayed by my side and he would help me a lot like picking him up from school, doing homework with him, making sure that he was okay and having conversations that were hard from, you know, a man and a at the time a little kid. Mm-hmm. Um conversations that I couldn't have because I wasn't I was a woman. So yeah. it was very helpful. Wow, how old was <clears throat> your brother at that time? My brother, I got him when he was Uh, the end of fourth grade, so that's was that like nine, ten, around nine yeah, or ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So what happened? Did you guys get married? Yeah, we got married. <laughs> <laughs> a year later, we got married. Okay. Uh, we moved in, and my brother's been with us ever since. So he's wow. like our older, older son now. So how old is he now? My brother's eighteen. So you yeah. guys raised him mm-hmm. from fifth grade yep. to a young man. Yeah. Wow. Which has been a blessing. Like um I see why certain things had to happen in my life. Yeah. For it to work out where I could be the person that took care of him and mm-hmm. have him and then this person come along and just walk that hard walk with me because it was like we were just married. Yeah. We have a kid now like he's 10. So we don't know what that is. You know, you have siblings, but it's not the same thing as having someone under you. You're responsible for this person. Absolutely. And how old were you when you guys got married? 24. Wow. So, yeah, 24, cuz I was just turning 25 that year. Wow, so you guys were married young with yeah. a whole child. Yeah. Wow. That is that really shows just the picture of how much God loves us. He even loves you through your husband and loved your brother yeah. through your husband and it's unconditional with no matter what we've done. Yeah, it was it's it was nice to see and even now just to see their relationship like my brother like loves him. Mm. Sometimes they feel more than me, but <laughs> <laughs> they're mean, like they besties. Have that connection, yeah. That's so sweet. That's something that he needed so bad and God knew it. He saw it and he yeah. provided. That's he so provided good. that, yeah. Okay, so take me back to the beginning of your marriage. You're newlywed, you're like 24. Yeah. You have a son. Um your brother, your yeah. brother's son. And so what was it like in the beginning of your marriage? It was, you know, just an adjustment because you know you're newly married and then you have your brother's son. <laughs> so that was an adjustment. But um we actually ended up getting pregnant right away in our first year of marriage. Okay. So three months of yeah, three months of being married, we find out we're pregnant. Um so we're pregnant. That's another, you know, adjustment because you morning sickness get being sick mm-hmm. but um a few months after we find out cuz we found out in June of 2015 by October of 2015 um I got very sick so I ended up having my son at very early he was 
25 weeks. Wow. Yeah. I was 25 weeks when I had an emergency C-section. He was considered a micro preemie because he was under, he was only a pound when he was born. Wow. So that was like a whole different like thing thrown at us that we didn't expect. Mm -hmm. We didn't even, I didn't even know I would get sick. It just happened. And in order for my life to be saved in his life, I, I had to have him. Okay. Yeah. So I'm sure that was really, really tough. Yeah. He, um, He's a little fighter. He was in the NICU for 20 days, mm -hmm. and then he passed away in November of that same year. So mm -hmm. all this happened in the first year of our marriage. We weren't even like, it was a few months of being married, and here we were going through something very difficult. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so having experienced all of this tragedy throughout your entire life and even your adult life how have you managed to find hope and to just get through each day it's been god he's he's been he's honestly been through everything in my life like since i was experiencing things with you know my family in high school just all of it like i see it now like how he's his hands has just been there he's been carrying me through it and it's you know I'm going now on seven years where without my son here, mm -hmm. and not a day goes by that it's not hard. Yeah. But every moment, every every day, he God gives us the strength, and it's just him honestly surrendering just my feelings, my my pain to him, and he's been carrying me this long. Mm. So it's God. That's such a picture of this is not a religion or a list of rules and regulations you you just go through each day. This is a real relationship yeah. with the God that created you, that created your babies, yeah. that sees you and knows you and values you and has always been there and will always be. Yeah, exactly like you said it. It's just, that's a good way to put it. It's a relationship and I wouldn't trade any of it for anything. He's awesome. <laughs> I wow. love I love God. <laughs> wow, praise God. The beautiful smile you have despite the, <laughs> the things that you've been through, He still gives you that joy and that fulfillment. Yeah. Wow. Because I realized that none of the things in this, you know, society or this world is going to make me fool me. It's going to be only Him. Like, He's the one that fills the voids. He's the one that carries me through the pain and gives me the strength that I need every day to keep going. Wow. That's yeah. so good. That's so good. What does your daily life look like now, today? Today it's different. I'm a stay-at-home mom. I have two beautiful daughters. How old are they? Uh, I have a four-and-a-half-year-old and a almost three-month-old baby. Wow. <laughs> and, well, my brother still. He's, <laughs> he's with us and our dog. So I'm home. I take care of the house. I plan to homeschool, so I do school with my daughter and just devote my life to them and I want them to grow up knowing that no matter what they face, like as long as they continue to walk with God, they're, they're going to be just fine. Mm, and that, okay. yeah, no matter through whatever pain or anything, that they could they could have true joy through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Do you have a specific heart for ministry um, or for people? Yeah. Um, young women, mm -hmm. I would say I have a heart for them just because I feel like if I can help them not make the same mistakes I made, mm -hmm. um, I can help or as long as I can, you know, just tell them about God and how they, he can really change their life. Cause it's not anything I would do. It'd be him. Yeah. Um, that would be amazing. That's one thing. And then even people that have lost, um, cause you know, I lost my son. I also lost my dad. My dad passed away the same day. My son passed away. We weren't close, but it was the same day. So it's still painful. Your biological dad. Yeah, my biological dad. Mm -hmm. um, so I think pain is pain no matter what. Mm -hmm. So just being there for people that are hurting, like my heart's really for them. Mm. Like you could, you could have a life after pain or after loss just by showing them my life because, you know, it's been seven years, but I'm still here. I'm still trying. I'm still walking and having that relationship with God and pursuing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't take away the hurt or the pain, and that's still very valid. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's still very real. It's mm -hmm. still there. You know, it's. I always tell my um, my husband that 
no matter how many years go by that our son is still going to be we're still going to hurt for him just because you know we lose we have this time that we don't have with him so it's still it's still painful you know my daughters didn't replace him you know Absolutely. they my four-year-old knows about him like mm -hmm. she talks about him and uh, she asks hard questions sometimes mm -hmm. but it's like I I much rather her know about him than not know know he existed right so yeah that's that's our our walk wow. I guess our life yeah absolutely Cynthia thank you I know this isn't the easiest um parts of yourself to share but I thank you so much and I really really trust that there will be so many people young women and even men, people that have experienced just hopelessness and tough trials that will be blessed and encouraged by this. So thank you so much for your boldness and your courage. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. I want to hug you. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this episode of Girlhood. Be sure to tune in for more stories similar to Cynthia's, and I'll see you guys next week. Next week on Girlhood. I think a whole lot of people think prostitution is just all about the sex. It's nothing about the sex. Okay. It's the lifestyle. Please remember to subscribe and send this to someone that may be encouraged by it. See you next week.